Hi guys, welcome to Making Sawdust. I'm Kevin, thank you for joining me. Today I'm gonna to share with you a quick tip on filling any gaps in miters or small little glue joints. And no, it is not sawdust and glue. So stick around. As woodworkers, we strive for perfection. We want all of our glue joints, our mortars and tenons, our miters, our butt joints, all of that stuff to be dead perfect. And we don't want to see any gaps and we don't want to have to use any wood filler, sawdust and glue, epoxy, anything like that. But as the project is smaller, like for instance, my recipe boxes that I just finished up, and we want that to be flawless. But many times we can't get it dead perfect. Uh, a smaller project is so much easier to see and so much easier for visual inspection by the customer. Uh, we really want to make sure everything is perfect. Now, as I was gluing the trim on my boxes or on my lids for these recipe boxes, I wasn't, uh, I wouldn't say I was careless, but I let a couple things slip. So there is some noticeable gaps in my miters and on my glue joints. A lot of my exotics I mill up on my bandsaw because really it just saves material. And I left a saw cut in a few areas. And I also hand cut my miters on my bench with a back saw. A very common fix for a glue joint is sawdust and glue. Uh, use a little bit of tight bond or a little bit of tight bond too. Mix it with some of the native sawdust from your project and you can fill some gaps. But what I have found actually is when the glue dries, it has a hint of color to it. So in some areas of your project, you're actually going to see some of that hue of the glue. What I like to do, I like to use CA glue. So what I'm doing right here is I am thicknessing my lids so I can get some of the purple heart dust. I'm also getting some of this ambrosia maple with it, uh, but that's okay. It's going to blend really, really good. The beauty of CA glue is it's clear. And if you don't mess with it, and if you use the right type, it'll soak into that glue joint. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually working the native sawdust into the glue joint, uh, dry of course, and I'm actually working that in. I wish I could get a really, really close up and almost like a microscopic cross section of that glue joint. But what I'm doing with my thumb and my fingers, I'm actually pushing that dust inside of that glue joint. And then what I'll do is come back and I'll put a little bit of CA glue on that glue joint in those areas and let it soak in. I usually use a medium consistency CA and 2P10 has that. In some applications I actually go for the thin because it'll actually soak into that glue joint a little bit more. I will not use an activator on this because what I do find is the activator which speeds up the cure. The activator will actually create a chemical reaction and will actually create bubbles in your CA. So after a final sanding and some inspection, it, they really do look very concealed. Uh, I recommend trying to get your miters as tight as you can, as your, your glue joints as tight as you can, but I also recommend using CA glue in, in a pinch. A lot of guys turn to epoxy for some uh, gap filling, some knot filling, things like that. I've used CA for that, and you really don't have to use your colored CA. In this case, I used some Purple Heart Dust and Clear CA, and it worked like a charm. After a little bit of poly and uh, some nice pictures, it really came out good. The customer is very happy. The customer bought three of these, and I would like to... Thank each and every one of you for sticking around, watching my videos. If you have not already done so, please click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, always leave a comment down below, and I'd be happy to answer your questions. Now, it's time to get out in your shop and start making some sawdust. Mm -hmm. 